today's video, we're going to take a look at a React component that's just grown a little bit too big and is doing a bit too much. Using the tests that we have written, we'll look at how we can split this component up into more components and write tests as we go. This is something I find doing pretty regularly inside larger React applications. You'll often find you create a small component. Over time, feature creep means that that component gains the ability to do a couple more things that it wasn't initially designed to. And you'll find yourself with a component that has lots of if else statements in its render method. And really that's just a sign that it's begging to be split up into smaller components. Whenever I do refactor a component like that though, I like to have some tests that prove that the component is working and you can use those to guide your work splitting the component up. Here on the screen, you can see the component in question and it's this money component here. So it can be used in two ways. You can give it just a min amount and a particular currency, in this case, Great British Pounds. And here it will output that 2,000 pence into 20 pounds. You see, to do this, we give it a min amount prop and a currency prop. However, then we needed a component that could list out prices as a range. So you'll see the component then gain the ability to take a minimum amount and a maximum amount. In this case, it will list from 20 pounds to 40 pounds because we've given it both a minimum amount and a maximum amount. So here I am in my editor. You'll see on the left hand side I've got the tests for the money component. On the right hand side I've got Jest running in the watch mode, so every time we make a change during this video the test will rerun and we'll be able to see if anything's broken. So if you look at the first test, it takes a currency amount and formats correctly. We get a minimum amount of 2000, a currency of GBP, and we get that the text back is £20. The second test here shows that if we give it a currency it's unaware of, it just outputs the, the amount as is. So in this case, giving it 2000 with a made up fake currency, it outputs 2000. Then the third test checks that we can do a range. So we give it 2000 and 4000 and it outputs from 20 pounds to 40 pounds. And finally, we have a test that says it does not use the max amount if it's less than or equal to the minimum amount. So what makes me think that this component potentially needs some refactoring? First is the, the awkward prop. When you, you want to use the money component to just output a formatted value, you have to give it a min amount prop. And that's not very intuitive to me. It feels really that there are two components hiding here. There's a money component, which could be greatly simplified in that it just takes an amount and a currency and outputs. And then there's a, another component, almost like a money range component that can take two amounts and use the smaller money component to output correctly. So here is the money component. You see we have the prop types. It takes a currency, which is required, a minimum amount, which is required, and then a maximum amount, which is optional. We then have this get currency data method. And this is used to simulate if we were if the component was being given this currency that it has to go and look for it somewhere in your system to pull in how to format the amount. In reality, this is actually much bigger in a real application. Obviously, you deal with a lot more currencies if you're if you're building a site that sells in, in different locations. Next, we have the format amount method. This just takes the amount and the base, divides them, and then formats it to two decimal places. And then finally, we have the render method. And really, if you're looking at this component, this should be the big sign that there's something odd going on here and that actually there's, there's smaller components waiting to be moved out. The first thing we do is we get the currency data. That will give us the symbol and the base. If we have that, then we know we can format, so that's good. If we don't have it, we drop all the way down to the bottom here where we just return the minimum amount unformatted. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with having the odd conditional in your render method, particularly one like this that just says, right, if we can't format it, just output it and be done with it. The, the main issue I have is what happens within this if block if we do have a currency. So we grab the symbol and the base and we format it, but then we have to do yet another conditional. So if we have a maximum amount and the maximum amount is greater than the minimum amount, we have to format the maximum and then return this from price one to price two, else we have to return just the minimum amount formatted. So this one render method has three different return statements for different HTML that it's going to output. And that's too many for me. This is this is quite complicated. When I'm looking at a component and trying to figure out how best to refactor it and what API and props it should take, the best way I find to figure that out is to actually go to the place where it's being used and write the code we wish we had. So in this first example, where we're just using the money component in its simplest form, we just give it a single value. What actually, what I'd like to write, rather than min amount equals 2000, I'd rather have money component where just amount is 2000 and the currency is GBP. And that to me is a much nicer API. I don't, min amount is kind of weird when I'm only supplying a min and not a max. So for me, it should just be an amount. The weirder one is this money component where I have to give it a min and a max. It kind of feels strange that if we have a money component that's taking an amount that it would then take an amount prop and then say a maximum prop. What really this should be is just a separate component. If I took this money here and I just renamed it to money range, 
and rather than min amount and max amount we could just simplify this down to min and max as well that now reads much better to me we have two separate components and it's very clear what they're doing first is taking an amount and formatting it the second one is taking two amounts and it's going to render and display those in some form and make it clear to the user that there's a range so first what we'll do is we'll go and refactor this money component to just take this solitary amount prop and not deal with any of the logic around ranges that will obviously break some of the tests but what we'll do is we'll we'll pull the tests out that actually are testing the range functionality into a new test file and write the new component for that so here i am in the money test file the first thing i need to do is get rid of the tests that i know aren't relevant for me right now and this is these two second tests the one that says it can take two amounts and show the range so for now i'm just going to comment them out i'm not going to delete them because they'll be really useful tests later on when we're building the new money range component and when you're refactoring what you should first do is make the tests look as they should obviously what we're going to do here is we'll update the money component usages in this file to use the prop amount so what i'll do is i'll change this min amount prop and i'm going to change it just to amount and i'll go and do the same down here as well so if i save those those are now breaking with expected uh, values and in the first case got nan and the second case has got an empty string and you can see we're also getting a prop type warning that min amount is marked as required but its value is undefined so now what we'll do is we'll leave these tests running we're going to leave the test file and we'll go and fix the money component so the first thing i'll do is change this prop type declaration we don't need max amount anymore and we're just going to take amount instead so we're going to go into the render function we still need the currency and i still want this if else for rendering the amount so rather than min amount down here it just becomes amount and that should get one of our tests working so now if we get a currency we don't know it'll just render it as is and the other thing we need to do is find this this dot props dot min amount here and change that to amount and that gets our two tests working of what we now need to do is get rid of all this code because this is irrelevant and again because we're going to need this later i am going to comment it out rather than delete it and that's a much better money component now it does one thing and that's it it takes n amount and a currency and formats it and outputs it so i've gone ahead and created a money range dot test dot js file I've not written any tests yet, but I've just imported the component, which doesn't yet exist, and I've created the initial describe block. And you can see we are getting the error that we can't find money range. So we're gonna go ahead and create that now. So I've set up the basic money range component, I imported React, I imported prop types and declared the three props, min, which is a required number, max, which is a required number, and currency, which is the required string. And I've also imported the money component because in a bit we'll need to use that within this component. On the right hand side you can see that the test suite is failing because we need at least one test. So at this point we can go back to our money test file and find the commented out tests and pull them over. And we need to update the actual test to use the API we want. So we're going to render a shallow money range. Rather than say min amount we're going to say min. Rather than max amount again it will just be max and then the currency will be G GBP. Now at this point we get a rather curious error but what this is this is because I've forgotten to export my money range component so now you see that we get method text is meant to be run on a single node not found instead and that's the assertion down here that we're trying to find a span element and check that the text contains the following however we haven't got a spam we're just rendering a paragraph that says testing so this assertion is no good to us for these tests i've been using enzyme which is a library from airbnb to make testing react components really straightforward and you'll notice that i'm using what's called shallow rendering when you test a component using shallow rendering only the first level of children are rendered this keeps the test quick because if you've got a component that's rendering four child components and they in turn render lots of stuff that's not all going to get rendered for one single assertion just the top level is however that means in this money range test because we're shallow rendering the money range the money components that it's going to render won't actually be evaluated and properly rendered in our test so i can't say that i expect the text to be from 20 pounds to 40 pounds what i can say though is i expect the text to be from some money component to another money component. We're already testing the money component on its own. If we were to test the exact output of the money component when testing this money range component, we'd just be duplicating tests. You have to trust that each individual component is tested properly, and then you can use shallow rendering across your application more. So what I'm first gonna do for our very first assertion is say that I expect the text equal from, and there'll be some money component to some other money component. Now this does couple the test a little bit to the implementation, because if we were to rename that money component, or change it to a different component, then these tests would break. But to me, this is quite a good test. We're certain that it renders two money components. If you're worried about this assertion not being quite explicit enough, we're not checking the amounts they get given or the currency, don't worry, we'll write another assertion to deal with that in a minute. So I'll save that test, and we're still getting the same error because we're looking for a span that we don't have. So now we can go into our render method of the money range and actually write this out. So I'm gonna wrap my return in brackets, and then we'll have a span and we'll say from and we're going to use the money component here and we'll say uh, amount this time is going to be the minimum and the currency will just pass straight through and then we'll say to money amount is max and the currency 
is also the currency. And I haven't closed off the span, which is why the test is going to fail. But now we can see that first test is passing. However, this isn't a good test because, for example, rather than passing this minimum amount through here, I could pass through 50. And our test is still saying that's valid, but of course this isn't valid because it's ignoring the min prop it's actually given. So I'm going to undo that change and we'll now write another assertion which will make sure that we're rendering the money components with the right data. So I'm going to say const money components and we use wrapper.find and you can literally give uh, an enzyme wrapper the name of a component and it will find them. So I'll do find money. So at this point what we can do is we can check that the first one is rendered with the minimum amount and the second one is rendered with the maximum amount. So we can say expect money components dot at zero and this is an enzyme function that lets you get the the first result from that find search and what we'll do is we can do dot props to get the props and then I'll say dot min and that should equal 2000 and we can see that fails the reason it fails is of course because the property isn't called min it's called amount so we're giving the money component an amount of 2000 I can do the same for the other one just say at one we should be on 4,000. And what you might also want to do is check that the currency is being passed through correctly. So those are all passing. However, this, as you might have realized, is quite verbose, and there's definitely a better way that we can rewrite this. So what I'm gonna do here, rather than check the amount and currency over two expects, I'm gonna merge these into one. Now, this is a little more verbose as a test than the money component, but in my mind, this is a pretty good test. We're checking that the text is what we expect. We're checking that it uses from and to, for example, and we're checking that it passes the right data down through into the child component. Now, if money range was using five or six different components with lots of different properties you wouldn't test all of them but this is the benefit of having small components that do one thing like this you can write a test that checks that it renders the correct thing and that it passes the right properties down to its child component not all components will fit this style of test you can kind of use your judgment to see if you'd rather do a shallow render and test like this or you can use the enzyme mount api which will actually render the entire tree properly into the dom and then you can check the actual text output. Or another option which I can cover in a future screencast is to use snapshots, which take a snapshot of your component based on the data you give it, and then they let you know every time that component's output changes. So now we need to deal with the second test, and actually what I'm gonna do is just delete it. Now we've pulled out money range and money, we have both the components that another component needs to render either a solitary monetary value or a range of two values. I don't feel that it's money range's responsibility to be able to take two, figure out that one is less than the other, and then not render them both and just render one. That's the responsibility of whichever component is mounting these components. By doing this refactoring and splitting out, we've now lost a whole chunk of complex functionality for a component that was causing us to use, you know, nested conditionals within render functions. Money range now doesn't have a single conditional, it just takes some props and it renders them. And if we go back to money, we can now delete this big if here that was commented out. And you can see that that's now much cleaner. We still have that one conditional, but other than that, it's it's much nicer. And that one conditional is fine. Often you'll have this in a component. If it doesn't get given the right props, it just kind of bails with a default response. Otherwise it can do its work. So having one if else like this isn't too bad, but if you ever have more than this, you should be wary and potentially consider splitting out into separate components. The only thing now that's left to do is to go back to the app and you'll see we're getting an error that money range is not defined. So I'm gonna import money range. And you can see if we go back to the page that everything is still being rendered correctly. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that was useful. There'll be a link on screen now to the GitHub repository where you can grab all the code that I've worked with. If you have any questions, I'll also leave a link in the description of this video to my Twitter account where you can ping me or just raise an issue on the GitHub repository. Thank you very much for watching.